Hi everyone, welcome back to Scale Model Kit Review. This is your host, Steve. This is part three to the beginner's guide on building the King Ghidra model kit. Now as you know, this is a snap together kit and we decided to go ahead and show you how to glue it together as a beginner and what you do to complete the kit to make it look very nice. Now at the end of part two we finished building the three heads, the two legs, and the two tails of Ghidra. And this episode will concentrate on filling the seams and making everything look good. We did go ahead and fill the seams with some AK putty and it worked pretty good I thought. I did finish filling the seams and sanding and making things look good on these parts here. So if you look closely you can kind of see what I've done with that. Did use some putty on his head, sanded down, smoothed over, along with the ribs on his neck have been sanded and those look pretty good. I won't be able to tell completely how well this is done until I put some primer coat on this and we'll show you that in another episode. This is all about filling the seams and sanding them down. With the legs, same thing. It's been all sanded and ready to go for our primer coat. And same thing with the other head. His horn on top looks good. Been working on that a little bit, filling the hole that was on top. So that's the two heads that are complete and ready for primer coat. That's the tail. Remember we had that big gap here on the end of the tail that's been filled with putty. And everything's been sanded and ready to go on this. And of course the leg. So let me bring over the parts that still need to be worked. And that would be, we got one head to work on still. One leg. And the seam on here, uh, this was the one that I uh, did not cut off the tabs on. And there's quite a bit of a step here. So we're, that will take some sanding on that. And then the tail, it's not bad here. We still have quite a bit of a step here where the gap is on the tail. So that's going to take some sanding. We're going to have to recover the, the scales on that after we sand it. And of course, I used the wipe down technique on the putty while it was still wet on his head. and. Uh, We'll see how that goes, because you can see there's very little putty left. All we have to do is do, do some sanding once again. Let me get the supplies out and show you what we'll be using to uh, fix these. These are all the supplies I used to uh, fill and sand the seams. Of course, we used the AK modeling white putty. And we bought that tool kit off of Amazon for like nine dollars pretty cheap with that kit came a very hard sanding stick has two different grits on both sides they also give us a nice little metal file it looks like a diamond uh, sanding type course and that's very, been very handy for this along with a very soft thick sponge it has different um, grits on that three different grits for that also use an exacto knife to uh, restore some of the scales and some uh, ec Tamiya extra thin glue. I went back to Walmart and picked up some more uh, sanding sticks and these are those ones for uh, sanding uh, nails, polishing nails. So those are relatively pretty cheap over at Walmart. 
what I did is I took and I cut it and now I have a smaller stick to get into tight areas with that and then I went back to uh, the Hobby Lobby which isn't very close by and they have these little thin sanding sticks so I picked up a small package of those and that's been very handy from get, for getting into tight areas on top of the head of King Ghidra. So we'll be using all these supplies as we go along. I'll be right back. So here's King Ghidra's tail and like I was saying there's a, a pretty large step here where the gap was and we need to sand that down to where you can't see the step anymore. So if, with that there's a lot of the material that needs to come off in this case so I'm going to use the harder sanding stick for that being careful that I don't uh, flatten any of the edges it's simply just going to be quick sanding just to get some of that material off and hopefully we can restore the scales in that process here looks pretty good there. I'm going to use the other side, it's not quite as coarse, just to fine tune it here. And you can see the step is pretty much gone in this case. Now I'm going to take my soft sponge sanding stick and uh, this will is very good for round edges it will prevent you from flattening round surfaces. So in this case this is a gray side here is a little more coarse than the other. Then I'm going to go with the, the white side here little more little less coarse that looks pretty good and it looks pretty good there there's still that little bit of a gap and seam on the the round side here. Now it's hard to get into that area so that's why I have this smaller sanding sponge that I cut from those uh, nail sanders and that should get me right in there where I need to be. And we'll just continue sanding the, the rest of the seam here. Because that hasn't been done yet. If you're wearing jeans, you can simply just take and wipe this on your jeans and it will clean it off like that. Take off most of the stuff and it cleans it up a little bit so you can continue sanding. So that worked out good. And visibly it looks good but what you want to do is you want to use your finger and feel to see if it made a difference if you got rid of that step. We'll do the other side now. Getting these uh, all these different parts ready before they're mounted on the body is a good idea. It's going to be hard to do if you already had it mounted on the main body of Ghidra. So now we'll take our, our softer sponge, go over this area, and 
just to smooth things out. And we'll show you what will really smooth things out and really hide the seam here next. Try to get in there on that area where our step was. actually looks pretty good. Now, to uh, bring things in even smoother, I'll show you what we do with that. We'll bring in the extra thin, and we're going to actually going to coat the edge here with the extra thin, and that's really going to smooth things out for us even more so, and. Uh, make things pretty much invisible with the seam. So I just simply take and coat it. Be careful you don't get any of this on your fingers. So you may just have to do, like do a, do a section and let it dry for a bit and then move on. Okay, so it's simply just going over the seam area. Everywhere where I sand it, I'm applying the glue on and that will smooth it out and actually hide the sanding marks as long as they're not deep. So you want to make sure you kind of use a little bit of a fine grit to smooth it out and then use your glue. glue is just going to smooth it out and we can let it dry and come back and look at it a little bit later Always be careful when handling these bottles. They have a tendency to tip if you're not careful and you'll spill glue all over the place. And always put your lid back on tight. Always use this in a well ventilated area. It smells really bad. Okay, so in this case, now just don't set this down on your bench because if there's any extra glue, it could fall, you know, and ruin the finish on your bench. So I, I recommend maybe put it on top of your kit instructions or on a paper plate or whatever to help uh, prevent that from happening. Okay. So I'm going to let that dry and uh, we'll look at it a little bit later and see what more we need to do with it. I'll be right back. Now let's uh, clean up the seam on his leg and this one has the large step on it so we're going to have to remove quite a bit of material here to get it smoothed over and his knee especially here. I'm going to rock his leg back and forth as I sand with this because this, this could flatten out if you're not careful. The plastic on this kit is very hard plastic, so it takes quite a bit of sanding to get to remove the material. Now right here we have that sinkhole, so we're going to go ahead and sand on that just a little bit. I'm going to go in there with a softer sponge because of the curves that are involved here. Same thing on the back. We've got a very large step here. And I'm just filling it with my finger to see if I can still fill a step, which I don't. And I wiped it off on my jeans, nice and clean again. Just removes the material.
Now let's go after this with the softer sponge. Now for that sinkhole, this uh, putty is very hard putty, so it had a little bit of shrinkage, so I still have a little bit of a sinkhole going on there with the shrinkage of that putty. So that I'm kind of surprised about, but uh, most putties would do that anyway, so I'm probably going to have to put another coat on there, but we'll see how much we can sand off. I'm going to take my file to this a little bit just to get a lot of that putty off because like I was saying, the putty is pretty, it dried pretty hard. So it's not like some of your automotive Bondo filler, the red stuff. That stuff's really soft. And really, you could use that with this too. I didn't buy any. It's very smelly. You'd have to have well ventilation to use that Bondo stuff. But this one here doesn't smell. And you can see I got most of it off there. Okay. And, uh, We'll see. I'll take my sanding sponge to it now. And you can see the sinkhole still that's there. We'll take our softer sponge once again on it. And we'll go over all the areas that I've already sanded. Not pressing down too too hard in this case. Use the finer grit now. And the, the last side here is even finer. Let's put that on there real quick. It's almost a polishing grit, so I don't want to polish it too much. And that's how that looks. Now we'll go ahead and bring the extra thin over, and we're going to smooth it out with the extra thin looks a lot better than what it did before before I may have to go after the knee the knee looks like there's still a little bit of a step there but we'll see Do the back side. May have to work on the back of the knee area here. But for the most part, it looks pretty good. Now you're probably wondering, and I know you're wondering, I sanded down all the detail on the scales. Well, we're going to try to restore those scales with our file and our X-Acto knife. Okay? Now if I was back home, because I'm still at that undisclosed location, I would have other tools I could use. I could have a round file. Uh, you know different different size files to really get in there and, and restore those scales but I'm going to use what I have here in my hotel room which are these two items to restore those scales so I'm going to wait for this glue to dry and then I'll show you that here next okay uh, the next thing we'll do is we'll look at
doing the seams on Ghidra's head. So I'll be right back. Okay, so let's work on Ghidra's head next. There's all kinds of seams going on on this part. It's obvious the tooling is very old on this, and where the seams are is typical of the day with the tooling. So on top of the head, there's actually a seam running on the left side of the snout and the right side of the snout. And there's a seam in the middle where we put them together. And of course we had that hole by the uh, center horn. And we uh, made our own horns with that because remember I, I, I mistook the horn for a tongue. So inside we actually have a tongue now, which is kind of cool. We can paint that up later. And uh, just I put a lot of uh, putty on here, but I did use some water and wipe off most of it. So it's not going to be too bad to get all them seams fixed. There's also a seam on the front of the snout that we have to fix. And then on the bottom, there were a couple of ejector pin marks for where, where is the pins that are used to eject the pieces out of the mold, out of the tool. And there's, there were some holes we had to fill, so we did that there. And notice his jaw still moves, so we have to fix that. Uh, I'll have the seam going on with that. And of course the main body, there's a large seam running along here, along the ribs. And on the back side here, there's a seam. Um, where this, where his, those are, I've just been filling it with extra thin to smooth it out as much as possible, but it's not too bad. I could probably apply a little more and let it sit for the day. So, let's see, what should we work on first? Let's work on his body here. So, just like we did before, we're going to take the harder sanding stick. And just it's pretty good there's no step there so it's just going to be a really light sanding just a little bit here okay that's pretty good now we'll take this small stick here and we'll go over what we just did. So you can kind of see what's going on there. Alright, we're unable to get into the the grooves of that with this with these particular sanding sticks. And definitely I can see a seam right there still. Let's work on that a little bit. That's good. Now we'll take the soft sponge. And that'll, that'll work a little bit better on this. Prevent us from flattening anything out. Now let's take our real, real thin sanding stick and we'll try to get in to those grooves. Okay, we're going to need a little more than that. So that's where this file is going to come in. That's going to allow us to get into the grooves. And we'll be able to clean that up with some glue or an X-Acto blade. So I'm just going back and forth. Just make it so you can kind of see what I'm doing at an angle like that and then I'm gonna do the other side and that gets in, that gets into the groove
And of course we have to go all the way up. There's that. Once again, take my soft sponge. Blow it off. And it feels pretty good. Definitely have some work to do in there. But well, I want to do that a little bit later, so we're going to use the same technique again. We're going to take our glue now. We're going to go ahead and go over this area to smooth it out. And then after it dries, then we can see how much more sanding we need to do to fix it. So, And the, the glue will actually fill in some of the cracks that we missed. So it makes it really smooth when you do this. You can kind of see that. I had pretty good success with the other two heads by doing this. Okay, so then after this dries, I can always go in with my X-Acto blade and I can remove any of the extra material in between the grooves there to fix that seam even better. But I want to make sure it dries first before I do that. Okay, so I'll let that dry and then we'll move forward onto the top of the head a little bit later because I want to make sure I don't get any glue on my fingers and leave fingerprints on the part here. So there's quite a bit of glue going on here. I want to let that dry for a little bit. I'll be right back. Okay, I am back. I let the parts dry a little bit from the glue that I applied to the ribs to uh, smooth over everything. And then I started sanding this already. I took the file that came with that uh, hobby kit filed in the ribs that, are the, that go across the front of his snout and sanded down most of the putty. What I found out about this putty is it does dry extremely hard and it does shrink. I'm not very happy about the shrinkage with this putty. Uh, I, I have other putties out there that don't, don't shrink as much as this stuff. But uh, it works relatively pretty good. Um, besides that, but I pretty much worked out all the seams as much as I could off camera. I'm sure you didn't want to see that again. I explained everything previously. Uh, with the foot, um, that's the part here that where the putty really uh, shrunk and it still left a little divot there. And what I'm going to go ahead and do this time, instead of putting more putty on it, I'm going to go ahead and apply some super glue to it and let that dry. So I'm just going to pile a super glue on top of there. Super glue will act like a filler and give me a give me something to sand down a little bit later. So it's pretty thick super glue. So you can see that. If it focus there, and you can see that. So I'll just make sure that I keep it level while it dries. Be right back. With the tail we had that very large step here where the gap was and where I put in the putty. So I did some a uh, lot of sanding there. Now what you want to do here too 
Same thing with the file. Just go ahead after the glue is dried, do some cross hatching with the file back and forth in a crisscross pattern to bring back those scales. And that seems to work pretty good, but I'll go ahead and check it out a little bit later when we go ahead and put a little primer coat to see how everything looks. All right, the super glue is dry. We'll go ahead and sand this down. We'll take a sanding sponge that's soft, try to round everything off. Yeah, that looks much better. We'll take our glue here and apply a glue across this. And that looks good right there. All right, so I'll let that dry, and I will be right back. We're going to look how we're going to check our seams. I picked up this acrylic paint, the Folk Art Brushed Metal Paints. And uh, you can find this at any of your local stores that carry craft supplies. So what we're going to go ahead and do is... Uh, take the silver out and that one right there we're going to use that to check our seams with and make sure we shake this up really good and then we'll apply it to our area of the kit it has a matte finish to it so we'll just see how that works I'll be right back I picked up these folk art brushes also and they're just simple craft brushes they have a nice tip to them and they're going to be perfect for what I need. Alright, so we're going to pour some of this out. Pretty thick stuff. Don't think I need to thin it out any. I'm going to paint it on the seam here. And add a tap of water to my brush. Spread this out a little bit. Just to check their seams. And really, that looks really good, actually. I'll let that dry. Looks really good. Do the back side. The back side won't be seen as much on the kit, but, you know, seam filling and correcting is, is what it's all about here. And we'll use a little bit of water to thin this out. Add some water to the paint here. Very thick. Why am I using silver? Silver really helps to show seams more than any other color. 
And since I don't have an airbrush to airbrush this on, I'm just going to paint it on. I'll put that aside and let it dry. Now we'll do one of the heads. Just going to add a little water to this paint. It's real thick. And paint the seam. looks good. Paint the bottom here just to see what that looks like. Snout. And the top of the head. What I can see seems to look really good so far. I'll let this dry and we'll give it a look in a little bit. Alright, so I have everything painted up. All the seams are painted up and I'm very happy with what I see so far. I may have to do a few minor touches here and there, but I'm going to let this dry so I can look at it even further. So that's going to go ahead and conclude part three. And in part four, we'll go ahead and check all the seams and continue with the assembly. Thanks for watching everybody. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe, hit the bell for all notifications. With that, happy modeling everybody and take care.